One of the great things about being a haematologist at the moment is the shift in treatments away from traditional chemotherapy to a range of treatments now which aren't chemotherapy in the original sense of the word. So I always stress to my patients that chemotherapy means treatment with drugs that kill dividing cells. Yes. By definition, of course, that's a cancer and lymphoma. But there are other cells in the body that are dividing uh, through adult life, hair follicles, lining of the tummy, and the bone marrow making the blood cells. So the three commonest side effects of traditional chemotherapy, uh, hair loss, uh, nausea, and low blood counts, uh, which gets a run mm. in the lay press as um, immune suppression and conflicting views about that. Um, and, and we've been through what I perhaps a little bit cynically call the golden age of chemotherapy, when it was discovered in 1976 that a certain combination, the forerunner of CHOP, cured a lot of people with a common form of lymphoma. People started saying, well, if chemotherapy works, let's give more of it and we'll get even better results. And so around the world, different and very prestigious cancer centres each devised their own regimens. Um, and I think part of the competition was about the best acronym, so we had PROMACE, Cytobom, and MACOP B, and a variety of others, until finally somebody said, let's actually compare them. And the breakthrough when it came, in fact, wasn't more chemo, but a change to um, immunotherapy through rituximab. And the great thing about rituximab, uh, I think, is that it not only is improving cure rates in aggressive lymphomas, it's prolonging survival and periods of time between treatments for people with low-grade lymphomas. There is a risk of an asthma-like reaction and low blood pressure at the time of particularly the first infusion. Thankfully that's uncommon and uh, after that it's generally very well tolerated and it's added about 15 percent to the survival rates for diffuse large cell lymphoma up from 60 to 75 percent which is getting into the territory of the survival rates for Hodgkin lymphoma, one of our big success stories. And the other really gratifying thing is that it is improving uh, survival and a period of time between treatments for people with low-grade lymphomas of the B-cell type. I must stress that rituximab at the moment is only available for, is, is an antibody that's specific for B-cell lymphomas, which are about 80% of lymphomas overall. There's a lot of work being done uh, on more antibodies. Um, including some directed against the original molecule that rituximab was directed against and other antibodies now directed against other molecules that characterise other types of lymphoma. Um, so there's uh, an antibody which is being used in chronic lymphocytic leukaemia which is a related disorder and we're still waiting for the first antibody for T-cell lymphomas. Um, but the antibodies are one of several promising lines of research now that really mean in the next 10 years I think the landscape of treatment for lymphoma is going to change substantially.